Right, we're off. Evening, everyone. Um, it is Tuesday, 17th of January, and we are so close to the end, I can almost taste it. But I'm going to taste a few more things beforehand. So we're going to carry on going round Isla, and we did Bunahaven, Kalila, and then we're going to jump across, rather than carrying going around the coast, we're going to jump across to the shores of Loch Indal. So here's the map of Isla, and you should see Bamor pretty much in the middle of the, um, the island. And um, Bamor is... Um, one of the one of the more highly rated Isla whiskey uh, distilleries, although most of them are incredibly highly rated anyway. So this particular sample was very kindly donated by Chris and Lindsay Cook. Thank you very much for this. Um, who were with me since the start, basically. Um, Chris and Lindsay were customers that. Um, were very regular customers while I was a manager at the whiskey shop in York and I've carried on um, keeping in contact with them since I left so um, both of you thanks very much for this um, so Bamore um, now if you look at Bamore marketing it talks about the um, distillery basically being created started founded in 1779 but there's no actual evidence to show that there was whiskey distilling going on there um, until a, a gentleman called John Simpson took out the license in 1816. Um, so before then, it's a little bit fast and loose as to whether this is just marketing or not. Um, now, it, it operated fairly uneventfully. It just sort of ticked along quite nicely. It changed hands every few years. There were new owners took over, everything like that. And it was pretty much kind of like, it just was. It did a decent job, it was going okay. Owners came and went, but nothing particularly major happened. Um, apart from apparently in um, 18, when was it? 1841, apparently Windsor Castle requested a cask of Beaumont, um, which is kind of unusual because the English weren't really into Scotch whiskey because the English and the Scotch weren't exactly, never really had been best buddies. But whiskey wasn't really, particularly for the royal family kind of like um, that type of, of scotch whiskey was was uh, particularly kind of a big thing however like i say fairly unmetful up to um 1963 um, when a guy called stanley p morrison bought the distillery who was a um, a whiskey broker and Bamore became morrison Bamore. Uh, the company was known as morrison Bamore, and it was it, he was really the guy that um, I'm going to try and put a picture up of him if I can. If I can find one, I'll put a picture up. Because he was really the guy that absolutely revitalised Bamore. And um, and I pronounce it Bamore, you might call it Beaumont. I don't really think there is a proper pronunciation of it. Um, but it's uh, he really kind of took Bamore to the next level. Um, the distillery was, was uh, modernised, it was revitalised, it was refurbished. Um, marketing started to play a big thing and it began to grow and they, they were one of the, the earlier distilleries that were, were really pushing themselves as a single malt as well as opposed to focusing on the blended whiskies. That's not to say Bermore isn't part of blends but right now a lot, you know, the vast proportion of, of whisky that they make and their focus is um, for single malt whisky. Um, I am just going to check because I've got a little bit of glare in my glasses and it's just off putting me ever so slightly. Um, so, um, 1989, uh, Suntory, the Japanese whiskey company, bought a stake uh, in Bamore, in Morrison Bamore, because they could see something in there. They could see that there was actually something go good going on here. Um, and then in 1994, they took, um, they took full control of the company. And it, w it was already sort of the early 90s, the influence of Suntory was, they were pushing marketing, they were pushing the range, they were starting to expand the range. And um, once Suntory took over, it really took off in terms of, it, it almost seemed like you couldn't move for Bamore. But because they were one of the first ones doing it, there are, there are distilleries out there that at the moment, it just seems like they're flooding the market. And there are limited editions flying around absolutely everywhere. And there's travel retail exclusive, and there's this one, and there's only limited numbers of that. And it, it, it does become a bit of overkill. <coughs> Excuse me. So, but Bamore were one of the first ones to do it. It was sort of Bamore and Dalmore and McAllen were the ones that started doing the limited ranges, but then also the really expensive bottles. Um, you know, I can remember being at the whiskey shop and uh, it was Bamore 1964 that was two grand a bottle. It was like the real, real high-end stuff. Um, the argument being, 
is it is it quality or is it just price are you just kind of like putting these out there because there are people you know asia was becoming a big market um and it was starting to become you know collectors items so there was quite a big range of them all and um what i have here is the 12 year old but there was a 10 at some point and it used to be <coughs> excuse me i do apologize because i've got the microphone in it um it was what was it was it 12 15 17 21 25 and then 30 but now so this is the 12 year old that i've got and this is what the bottle looks like now and it was a 12 but they then changed the range and i think it was 12 it's 12 15 and 18 so this 12 year old is um about 35 quid fairly standard entry level price to be perfectly honest um, I think they probably could even get away with upping it to 40, but don't tell them I said that. But I did a tasting when it was the, um, I'm sure it was 15, but it was definitely the 17 and the 21. And it was a vertical tasting of the more that I hosted. I was incredibly lucky to do this. So we did 12, I'm sure it was 15. Then we did the 17, then we did 21, 25, and a 30 year old as a progression through the night. Started off the youngest, worked our way through. And it was fascinating to see the progression between the 12 and the 15 then to the 17 then to 21 25 and 30 and it was eye-opening for a lot of people because the assumption is with whiskey is the older it gets the better it gets so if you were to draw it as a graph and you had price no quality in terms of um complexity and depth and finish and length and everything like that on the vertical and uh, age on the bottom the assumption was that the older it gets the better it gets and it, it, but it can't go on exponentially it has to tail off it, it can't it can't physically get any better because otherwise you could have a 40 year old whiskey that your body would explode in pure joy and it would be the best thing you'd ever had and who needs sex because there's a bottle of whiskey it just doesn't happen it tails off you can overage whiskey it can lose its character it can lose its individuality or what makes that particular whiskey that distillery so distinct and unique and doing this tasting me personally 12 very good 15 excellent 17 nailed it all of the complexity but all of the flavors that were still there in the 12 but they were mellowed out they were dancing off each other the finish went on for hours it was absolutely amazing the 21 just was starting to tail off everything was there but a little bit duller a little less sparky a little less it, it just didn't quite have the complexity. Then the 25, which was smooth as silk, but started to lose something. And likewise, the 30, I mean, it wasn't that it got worse, but it just, it plateaued and then just started to dip. And this high point was the 17 year old. So I was really disappointed when I found out that they'd got rid of the 17. Now it might be that the 18 is even better. I don't know, because I've not tried it. However, what I do have is I still have a bottle of the old 17. When I left the whiskey shop, I put one aside because I knew at the time that they were planning to change it. So I still have, and this is what, so I've shown you a picture of what the new bottle looks like. This is what the old labeling used to look like. Um, this is not going in the Dramaday charity auction. This is my bottle. I've no idea when I'm gonna open it. You know, I think I said I was gonna open it at the birth of my first child, and I've had three so far, and it's not, um, it's, it's still unopened. Interestingly, <laughs> I've still got the price on it. Uh, 41.99 and if you don't believe me there it is from the whiskey shop 41.99 for a Bemore 17 I dread to think what this is going for on auction and I dread to think what what's the 18 going for I don't know what the 18 is going for but I bet it's not 41.99 considering the 12 year olds 35 quid so um, Bemore still have their own malting floor but not all of it, uh, they can't um, malt enough barley to, to satisfy their demand, the, the need for the, the amount that they're making. So it, it's about a third um, that they actually get from their own malting floors and the rest comes from Port Ellen. And it's a slight, it's a peatier um, malting that they use, that they get from Port Ellen. So um, if there is, then there may well be some releases where it is just kind of Bemore made with Bemore's own peated um, barley and it probably won't be quite as peaty as the standard versions that you'll find. It's mainly sherry casks, but they do use bourbon, and there are plenty of, um, I think it was Dawn and Dusk that was a, there was a pork cask, 
and there was a was it red wine cask or something like that they, they've played around with casks and done wood finishes and this and that and the other and they've got all sorts there was there was legend dust dawn christ there was all sorts of single names that were like no age statement but it's finished in this and that and the other so that they're not afraid of using other casks but i think at its core it's predominantly sherry casks but not entirely um and they do um i don't know if it's all the maturation but maturation on the island and one of their warehouses one of their vaults vault number one apparently is um it, it's it's one of the walls of the vault number one is actually part of the sea wall for the town um, and it's below the level of the lock so it's a really weird climate where it's kind of like literally a wall between that and the water um, with sea air and this kind of like underground cavern it's it's very very unusual but really gives it a lot of character so it has been a long time since I've had just Bemore 12. I've had lots of Bemores before. I've, I'll, I'll admit now I'm a fan. I have been a big fan. Um, but it's one where I, it wasn't like I progressed, but Bemore kind of went off the radar for a bit. Um, you know, I used to love the stuff. The 17 was phenomenal. I don't know when I'm going to open this, but I will open it at some point, and I'm hoping it's as good as I remember. Um, but it's sort of, I got into other things you know bourbon and and Avalau and what have you so it's been a long time since i've had the 12 year old so i'm very very interested to come come back to it in terms of color it's a good color i don't know where the coloring has been added to it i don't think so um let me just see if it might have said on this i mean this is obviously an old bottling but it, it doesn't say anything in terms of mitt farb stuff and all that lot but i can't even i don't actually know when that ruling came in so um, but I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt and say that probably colouring isn't added. Which means that it has been, because if it's 50-50 I'm normally wrong. But um, a nice amber colour to it. Oh, there's a weird... <clears throat> so there is a smokiness to it, and it's a smoky rather than medicinal element. But there's a sea saltiness to it, but there's also... And I'm... I just want to make sure it's not the glass. No, it doesn't seem to be. It's it's like um, it's like a fish and chip shop. So it's a combination of kind of um, cooked batter. So it's it's there's a slight oiliness to it, which is the cooking oil, but it's a cooking oil oiliness, as well as cooked batter, as well as salt and vinegar, kind of in the air. It's a proper fish and chip shop smell. And there is pepper in there as well, as well as this smokiness. So it's it's kind of like a, it's like a fish and chip shop with a, a fireplace next door to it. And it's it's softer than I th I remember it to be. It's it's very much, it's not quite as intense as the Kalila was yesterday. but it's more so on the palate. Definitely kicking through now. And it's very much a bonfire smokiness. Lovely rich mouthfeel to it though. And a really nice, very caramel sweetness, which I'm assuming is from the sherry casks. So this really rich toffee salted caramel feel, as well as a lovely smokiness and it's a definite bonfire smokiness. It really is, there's a slight earthy touch to it. And considering the, the maritime element that they tend to put on, on a lot of the bottles, there's less of a sea salt sea air. It's kind of there, but this is more bonfire than, than sea breeze. Um, and, you know, it's, it's less maritime than I thought and more, more of a smoky feel to it. It feels like it's got more to give, and I think that's where you'll see the progression going through the ages. I think it's, it really feels like it's a little bit tight still. It, it feels like that smokiness and the, the hit that you get. So it's, it's 40%, and yet it feels like it's maybe 43, 46. There's a little bit too much bite of the alcohol. Not a bad thing. It just feels like it's got more to give. And this, the, the elements that are in here You'll see, if you do a progression, if you do the 15, the 18, or if you can get hold of the 17, you'll see how all those elements 
just open out and all of a sudden expand and start melding into each other like some kind of watercolor painting where it all kind of comes into each other and creates something really, really special. It's still a good whiskey, don't get me wrong. I just think it's, not that it's too young, it's perfectly drinkable, it really is. It's a very, very good 12 year old whiskey. But y y knowing where it can go to and knowing how bloody good that is when it gets there, it just, trying this just makes me want to open that because I, I know how good that can be. But it's well worth trying out. But if you can, go for the 15, go for the 18 year old because I think they have more to give. And I think this is a very interesting um, look at the core of a whiskey before it starts to open out like a flower. Ooh, hello. So yeah, it is really good though, don't get me wrong. It's very, very good indeed, but I know that it's, it's a lot, lot better. So it almost, I, I almost sound, I feel like I'm sounding a little bit negative towards it and please don't think I am. I think it's excellent. I think the flavor profile is fantastic. The smokiness is very, very good. The maritime element that they put on the labels and the marketing, I don't think is quite as prevalent, <clears throat> but this lovely, rich, sweet toffiness that surrounds the smokiness works really, really well. It's great stuff. It's really, really good. Um, right, that's me done. Uh, quick rinse out, and then I shall crack on with another quick one, and um, we'll get going. Right, I shall see you in the next one. Cheers. <laughs>